from the moment she was born, my husband and I noticed that she was her face wasn't fully symmetrical. And when she would sleep, one eye would always stay a little bit open. They kept asking me, well, what, what could we do for you? And I, you know, I just said, you know, I, I really need the names of people who specialize in this and do this all the time. For Leah, she had a problem with her coronal suture on one side, and that led to an asymmetry um, in her face, specifically around her eye and her forehead, and then a problem where the brain could not grow forward on one side. Though there's certainly a lot of nuance in how to put the head back together so that there's enough room for the brain and that there's none of that asymmetry left. So we were able to meet Dr. Frem and Dr. Reed simultaneously. They were just very accommodating and it was just a very coordinated care. With craniosynostosis, a child can have developmental issues, vision issues, appearance issues, neurologic issues, airway issues, and therefore there's a need for different specialists to intersect and provide holistic, comprehensive care. So on the majority of cases, Dr. Frim and I come together in the operating room. I usually expose the structures for him, and then he works with his associates to safely remove these structures or bones, keeping the brain safe. And then I will reshape the bone and put them back together. So give the brain some space for future growth. Anytime you can group together a bunch of people who are aiming for the same goal and have different views, different expertise, and can combine that is going to provide for a better outcome. My role on the team as the audiologist is to monitor hearing and balance concerns for our patients and their families. We can come up with one treatment plan for our patients. It's really powerful to have an answer, um, to have uh, an explanation for why uh, your child has um, craniosynostosis or a cleft. The role of genetics in the CAMP program is to sort of provide support for thinking about whether there could be a genetic cause for uh, clefts um, and other craniofacial differences. In Leah's case, again, you know, it involved complex surgery, keeping the brain safe, keeping the eyes safe. She looked perfect. I remember the first time I saw her after coming out of surgery, my mom and I just like looked at her and we were like, she looks so symmetrical. I mean, she looked, I mean, she always looked perfect, but you could tell, I mean, right initially off the surgery, how wonderful she looked. And, and at our last appointment, Dr. Reed mentioned that, you know, unless any concerns develop over the next, you know, several years, he was very happy with how Leah had come along and he didn't see the need to see her again, that he thought she was doing as perfect as could be. They were the dream team. <laughs>